Hello guys, welcome back to Sister Soft TV. Thank you guys so much for supporting our channel, especially through this whole season of Real Housewives of Potomac. Before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Also, check us out our check our other videos. Be sure to like those videos, comment on those videos, and continue to support our channel with your subscription. Be sure to check us out on Instagram at Sister Soft TV. So let's go ahead and get on with the review. So a couple things happen in this review and I just want to talk about just a, just some dynamic moments that I feel like we really need to have a conversation on. So in part three of the reunion, we get the whole Monique and Candace dynamic. We also get Monique reaching out to Candace and also apologizing and she also revealed to us that the reason why one of her triggers that as one of one of her triggers and which escalate the fight is when people put their her their hand in her face and she said that is one thing that her father actually used to do and that is a childhood trigger this in a way kind of makes sense everyone has a trigger that you know something maybe you remember from childhood that you know that's usually repressed so it, it makes sense in a way and I wish that she would have been a little bit more vocal about that especially during the season and we we can get a, a like an insight and a better understanding what really triggered her so I'm really glad that she really found what are her triggers and you know she can really learn from the situation and learn that you know now that she has identified what triggers her she can really move on from this and really get a better understanding of okay well this kind of makes this makes me feel this way where when people do this and you know healing can come from it so she does reach out and apology for well she reaches out she apologizes to Candace and Candace I don't know she's a little bit more she's not really receptive of the apology because but she understands that people do have triggers and childhood repression but she's not really receptive of it because she feels that it took 365 days to for Monique to apologize and I'm guys i'm really not even sure what exactly candace really want from monique at this point monique has apologized she feels that monique should have apologized like during the season well we cannot i hate when people go back to the past like or relive the past we just need to move forward we're living in the present and we need to look in the future so she can't go but she cannot time travel and go back to what happened last year we just need to focus on what's happening currently and how do we move on from this i think that maybe it will take some time for candace to really kind of get the healing that she needs i hope she gets the healing that she needs since that since monique has reached out and apologized and admits her fault so maybe Candace can really look into it and we can all just move on from this. Because if this continues next season, this is just going your it's just going to be very, very, very tiring. And it's probably just gonna stop people from watching. So we kinda already, you know, Andy has already revealed to us that majority everyone is coming back he said it he said it like back in november he likes the cast so everybody is coming back even monique even candace everybody is coming back okay so this dynamic this everything needs to they need to fix this whether it is off camera they need to fix this dynamic and i really have to say that chris samuels I think that he was my MVP of this season of this reunion because I really appreciate him holding definitely 
Giselle and Andy accountable. Honestly, they kept trying to brush brush the situation with the um with the you know them plotting and the baby situation and everything. I love that he kept bringing it back, bringing it back, and he was trying to brush over it. No, like you, if no one can hold yourself accountable, if you can't hold yourself accountable, Chris Samuels can't. And I like that he was holding Giselle accountable because I feel like this is actually one of the worst seasons for Giselle, like the worst reunions for Giselle because she, in part three, she looked embarrassed because she knew what she did was wrong and she could not even admit like hey this is what I said and said saying that oh you know you guys brought it this but even if they brought it up to the show for you to even initiate that and say something about a child or this a child so for you to even for anything like that to even come out of your mouth as a woman that's very very disgusting that's very very low and i don't even know if i don't know how the situation is going to be for giselle but it's just not right she should have really actually apologized to monique like you know what? i should never even thought about this or said anything like this i would have definitely respected giselle a little bit more if she just apologize to Monique. I appreciate that Candace let it out in the open because Andy was definitely going to brush over it. And although some of the things that Chris Samuel said in the video, in the live, I was just kind of like, ugh. You know, but I'm glad that he did apologize to the ladies because it just, it wasn't a good look. But I'm glad that he was holding Giselle and Andy accountable because they were going to brush over that situation. All right, so then we also get, you know, Robin's segment and her and Juan are getting married. So that's really exciting. I'm really happy for Robin that, you know, I think that although Robin, you know, she does kind of play a back seat to Giselle, I'm happy that she is, you know, she her life is the most realistic if you really think about it, she lives a normal, she's an, she's just like a, just an everyday girl. You know, she lives a normal life. I think that the average woman can actually relate to Robin. And I want to say that I hope to see her evolve more come in season six. Step out of Giselle's shadow, not be a uh, not be afraid to speak her mind and she doesn't have to agree with the majority you know like look at Karen a lot of people like Karen because she is she speaks her mind she doesn't have to agree she doesn't agree with what the majority or the group says and I really hope to see that more from Robin for season six that she can really evolve within herself I think that you know she just if she is herself for season six, she's definitely going to garner a lot more likes because right now it's not, it's just not looking good for Giselle. Like she has shown that she, she's not accountable for anything. She doesn't, she doesn't apologize. It's just, it's, it's just, just nasty. You know, it's just not a really good look. Um, okay. So they also talk about the um, situation between Wendy and um, like her husband's family like how it made him feel and he was just like you know he hasn't really talked to his family for over almost 10 years and at this point he's kind of used to it you know he's very estranged from his family you know so they're just used to it and they're just moving on so that's all we are getting from that um what else okay so ray actually um <laughs> ray and karen they want to renew their vow 
and that's really exciting so happy for Ray their 25th anniversary bells and that's so exciting I'm really happy for Karen and she seems really really happy and I feel like her storyline you can tell like it was very very realistic and these were her real emotions like it was not a fake storyline nothing um what else happened so we also get the conversation between um karen and candace and people were saying that karen was playing neutral candace did not um like that karen was kind of um being neutral being a neutral being neutral in the um in the situation between her and Monique. So what I'm gonna say about that situation, I'm so happy that Karen never chose a side. This is not a, because choosing a side, like you cannot enable anybody, you know? Enable people, and that is what Candace wanted from Karen. She wanted enablers. And I'm sorry, like, Karen's a grown woman. Like, no one is going to enable you. Absolutely not. And Karen told Candace, do you need to talk to a, psychi a psychologist? And I know on every reality show, they always have a therapist or a psychologist on standby. Because a lot of things can happen. And that is why they always have, even in, even in Bravo, they always have a psychologist or a psychiatrist psychologist or therapist on standby even in nigerian reality show big brother nigeria they always have some kind of therapist on standby because of situations like this and i don't know what karen candace told karen like i don't know if she needs a psychologist or so or a therapist but karen recommended that so candace told karen that she can guys i really don't want to say it. it's so vain and it's just like why would you even say that she told karen um go burn in hell or something like that something within that nature but i know it was so like i don't even feel comfortable enough repeating what she said and it was just so vain like who says that and people say like oh their words words have meaning guys you know so, like they always say speak you know if you want something speak it into existence words have meanings and that's why we have to be careful what we say to people we really have to be careful what we say to people it's so disgusting and can this yeah you may need to take karen's advice and really get an actual therapist because you not a same person will actually go around and tell someone to go go burn in hell who says that why would you even say that it's not normal Ugh. okay guys so then what else do we get um then talk about ashley's situation with michael how Michael, and of course, he's not here. How him and who wants to go to Vegas with Juan, and they get that out the way. Both Chris, Chris Samuels, and Chris Bassett, they feel at odds because their wives are not in a good situation, you know, and they, they're really good friends, but you know, for their wife's sake, they want to, you know of course they're going to be loyal to their spouse like that is the right thing to do so they also talk about that but they are really really good friends and they really hope that they can get into a bit like both ladies can get into a better place and that's what we all want we all both want candace and monique to be in a better place with each other and i mean in a way i can kind of see that possibly they will um, but it just takes time. It really, really just takes time. But this is a start. Um, who do I think is my and well, my MVP of this reunion? It's definitely of. It's gonna be Chris Samuels and Karen, of course, because I like that Chris Samuels was the only person to hold Andy and Giselle to hold them accountable for what they said in the plot because they didn't even want to talk about this in the reunion he didn't even want to talk about it 
everyone acts like oh it's not a big it is a big deal you don't go around saying that to people or about people's kids but i don't know guys i think this was a good reunion it was worth the 90 minutes i'm not even gonna lie it was a really good reunion so this is gonna be this this is like the end of the potomac season five wow what a long season but i want to know what your thoughts are what do you think that this was this was a good reunion do you think that everyone left with a closure um what did you guys think about chris samuels like his actions what did you guys think about giselle's actions like what did you what do you guys think so far are you excited for season six let us know um yeah let us know what you what your thoughts are once again thank you guys so much for your support for our channel also continue to like and subscribe to our channel also check us out on instagram at sisters talk tv thank you guys so much peace love and blessings